Um, Die Hard is the ultimate Christmas movie. Um, it is about a man who is doing everything he can to spend Christmas with his family. Um, and coincidentally, coincidentally, he's going through a divorce and traveling across the country from New York to LA to spend family with his, or spend Christmas with his family. And man, the hijinks and everything that goes on along the way just don't want him to spend Christmas with his family. Um, you've got a fantastic cast of characters. You've got Snape, Snape. You've got Trevette from Walker, Texas Ranger. You've got just so many great, great cast of characters. Um, I mean, if, if White... those are the ones you go with on this, yeah, of course. <laughs> that's, that's what you're going with why wouldn't i <laughs> you skip the main actor nah he he uh, that's implied <laughs> yeah everyone should just know yes um but no, but no it, it, you're, doing, it you're is, doing great you're doing great it, it is a fantastic movie it is unequivocally a christmas movie um it's just got christmas values all throughout um and all i can say is ho 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 now i've got a machine gun ooh, 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 ooh. yeah so released in 1988 starring bruce willis and alan rickman um uh directed by john mctiernan uh known for predator last action hero the hunt for red october so he's no stranger to the action movies uh if he have you guys watched the uh the movies that made us the one about die hard yeah, a long time ago. Long yeah, time ago. watch watch that on Netflix. It's good. Uh, McTiernan didn't even want to do this movie. He thought it was stupid. Uh, he hated doing it the whole time. Did not want to do this movie. Uh, and it ended up being this huge hit that he never thought was going to happen. Um, but it is such a fun movie. And it's like, it, it definitely plays on that wish fulfillment of like where you know, especially, you know, watching all these action movies, like you start daydreaming about like taking on terrorists, like what happens if they come into my work? Um, it is wish fulfillment. It is fun. John McClane is somebody you can relate to. And I think like the best part about this Die Hard that does it differently than the rest of them, the, the rest of the Die Hard movies was that they made him human. Um, yeah. He was able to be injured. He was, uh, he was just as vulnerable as any other human being. Uh, he got lucky at times. Like, that was basically how he survived. Not to mention, the worst thing happens to him at the most inner, inopportune moments. Like, the glass breaks all around him while he's trying to fix his foot. So he ends up barefoot walking through glass. Like, you're talking about making him human. That is a human, or, or, a humanizing moment right there. Yeah. Well, and he... You know, they set that whole thing so that he could, you know, run through the glass when they talk about it on the plane earlier. He's sitting next to the guy and he's like, oh, you're a nervous flyer. Well, if you take your shoes off and curl your toes. And he's doing that in the bathroom yep. when he's nervous about talking to Holly, um, his wife. And, you know, through the rest of that, he's barefoot the whole time. You would think, though, if he had killed some terrorists, he would have just taken their shoes. But, you know, whatever. Listen, Sometimes you don't have time. If office, If Office Christmas Party is a Christmas movie. Then, then a Christmas party where terrorists take over mm-hmm. is a Christmas movie. The movie is. Is, ba- is on Christmas Eve. Yep. Winter Wonderland. Let it snow. And um, Ode, Ode to the World and Christmas and Hollis is on the soundtrack. His w- wife's name is Holly. Okay. It's a Christmas movie. There's no doubt yeah. about it. Santa Claus is in it. And again, as Sam said... Now he has a machine gun. Yeah. Well, and I love like the parts where he just kind of impro- improvises the survival stuff. Like, you know, the roof's about to blow up. He grabs the fire hose, ties it around himself. He knows it's a terrible idea. He does it anyways. And he somehow makes it out of that alive. And it's just because he had no other choice. He, that was his only way out. Um, and again, he just survives. And it, and then even after that, there's even more tension as he's slowly being dragged down towards the window like it's just so well done. It's such a great movie, well, and it was very controversial at the time because uh, because they chose uh, Bruce Willis to play him, and Bruce Willis was known for comedy at this time. The only thing he had really been doing was uh, the show Moonlighting, 
Yep. So they all thought, like, hey, what are you doing? He's a comedy actor. Why are you putting him in this action movie? And a lot of people were like, this is going to suck. It's going to be terrible. Like, this movie had the odds stacked against it, but it came out to be just an instant classic. It to is. your point, yeah. They made it a point that, like, this guy did not know what the fucking do. He was improvising the whole time. Like, he's in this office when he sees a terrorist there, and he's like, oh, shit. And he just, like, locks the door. Mm-hmm. Like, you, he's, you can tell he had no plan at all. And yep. he's just flying by the, the, the foot of his sleep. Like, he does not know what to do. And the, the look on Bruce Willis's face is just great acting. Because he looks like he's scared shitless this whole time. And that scene where Hans Gruber is acting like he's, like, Chad... Yeah. That scene is like that's my favorite scene of the movie, where he gives him the gun and it's uh not loaded and mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know. There's something about that scene that just cracks me up. Yep. So okay, I want to talk about that scene because it is one of the greatest scenes in the movie. It was unplanned originally, uh, and they kind of threw it in because Alan Rickman was messing around on set doing his Amer- fake American accent, so they threw it in there. But on top of that, this scene also shows how much of a criminal mastermind he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, because when uh, Bruce Willis is asking him, uh, like, oh, what's your name? He has the names of everybody on that floor memorized because Bruce Willis is looking at that plaque that says all their names. Yep. It's like he knows all this. This was like an indication that he was yeah. to the next level of yeah. a criminal mastermind. Yeah. And it's those subtle things in that movie that make it so great. Hell yeah. And that's so good. I it, love that movie. It, the most subtle part of that scene is him asking him and the slight pause before he answers. Mm-hmm. Like that, that mm-hmm. right there just sold it for me. And you have the, so far as I know, the one run DMC Christmas song. Ever oh yeah. 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 In yeah. that movie. <laughs> Yeah. Christmas and, and Carl Hollis. Winslow. <laughs> and Carl Winslow, baby. Yes. Yeah. Well, and that scene, that same scene, is how he figures out that he's uh, one of the terrorists is from his watch. Yep. Because he sees his watch, and, like, I was reading about that, and it's a it's a German timepiece. Yep. So they were able to figure out that he was one of the terrorists. Like, John had, I mean, he didn't know for sure, but he sus- had the suspicion then, like, this, this guy's one of them, uh, which is why he unloaded the gun. So really just interesting stuff all around with that movie. And I think it's, uh, again, it's, it is a holiday classic. 